Good evening. Tonight I want to show you three tricks that make IDEs that are not RStudio better for our development. So if like me you're using PSS or Emacs Speak Statistics, which is a plugin for Emacs that is used if you want to do some stats, be it with R, with Julia, even with Stata, I think, uh, this video might interest you. If you're using VS Code, I think that this video might interest you as well, because actually one of the things that I'm going to show you um, comes from, I, well, I don't know if it was developed specifically for uh, VS Code, but it's something that I discovered a few weeks ago when I was trying VS Code. And I must say that it's, I was impressed. It's a really nice IDE, but still I, I prefer Space Max. But uh, at least I learned that one trick that I'm using here now with Space Max, and it works quite well as well. So I have here an R session and I have a browser window. Uh, and I just started a fresh R session and you see that I have this message here. So I have some HTTP GD server running at this address. And this HTTP GD server is actually um, something, <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is, well, it's a, it's a server, a graphics device where Whatever plots I'm going to create are going to show in my web browser. So let's let's try. Let's try with if I plot empty cars, nothing happens. Nothing happens because I have to go to that address. So if I if I click here, I will go. Well, maybe let me actually I opened this window here. For this, I have now my plot that is showing here. I have some options. I can download it in several formats. I can show the history, I can clear, etc., etc. And if I plot another one, I also can go back to my previous plot. And this, of course, if you're using our studio, this is something that is by default included with our studio with the plot uh, pane. But if you're using uh, another IDE, this is not the case. And uh, with uh, Emacs, if you're plotting a uh, something with using the default graphics device, you will get a, win a window without any options that you can just close, basically look at and close. And if you plot another one, uh, it will overwrite. So you cannot go back to the previous plots. Basically, it looks like this. Um, if I view some data, if I view some data, you will show this is a, the window, the default window for viewing data. It's the same for plots. Actually, it's the same for plots. Uh, it's pretty disgusting. So. I'm pretty happy with this. So I have this thing starting when I, I start my R, R session. How did I do that? Uh, simply by editing my R profile. Simply by editing my R profile and I added this line. So HGD, this is the function that starts the server. Now, if I write a lot of code or if I, you know, if I didn't go to this website here, to this URL, um, the way you can go back to the to is to, to this URL it's to just call browse or H, 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 HGD HGD browse here it is this will take you as you see now a new window has opened this will take you to the URL and I actually even have a, a keyboard shortcut to just get it immediately in in two keystrokes I get it immediately, so I can I can browse my plots. So that's the first trick, and this is the one I learned uh, when I was trying VS Code because I read I think I read some guide uh, on how to make VS Code a nice uh, R uh, IDE, and this was uh, what they uh, what they advised to do. So using HTTP GD for the plots, and works pretty well with, for Emacs as well. So that's pretty cool. The other trick I use is uh, basically linked so. It's how to make this thing better. So again, if you're not using our studio, if you're using our studio, this is not a problem because again, you have a very nice view uh, plane, pane where you can see uh, your data. But here, uh, well, you cannot really do anything. You cannot even scroll with the mouse. It's pretty disgusting. So I, I wrote two functions. I wrote a, a, a function called view with a lowercase v, okay? And this wraps React table with some nice options that I chose. And if now I view my data here, here again, I get a new uh, tab that opens in my uh, in my web browser. And here again, I can scroll, I can reorder, I can filter. 
uh, it's really nice. So this is <clears throat> much nicer than, of course, than the default uh, data viewer. So um, you could you could change the colors. You can do anything. Uh, I defined these options, but you could put your own there. So this is pretty pretty useful as well. If I just want to take a, a quick look at data, and the last trick I use is something that I tweeted a couple of months ago, uh, actually last year, that I found useful and a lot of people found useful as well. It's a function that I at the time called Show in Excel, and now I renamed that to View Excel, like this. And what this does, I think you probably got it from the name. This opens the data frame in Excel. Well, here I have, because I'm on my Linux machine, I'm using numeric, but um, if you're doing that on Windows, it would, it would open Excel. And I guess on Mac OS, if you specify uh, the program, it will op open in Excel for, for Mac OS. And if you take a look at View Excel, what this does is that it writes the data frame in a temporary file and then it uses browse URL and here the browser is, so I, I put as the browser numeric, but if you put Excel or, or whatever, it will open. And of course, if instead of the CSV file format, you put it the XLS X format, it would open Excel by default, I guess. So um, this is pretty useful because it allows you to do things. Uh, why, why do I use that? So I don't like working a lot with Excel um, because I don't like, it's not that I don't like Excel per se, I don't like uh, developing GUI-based GUI workflows. Okay, I wrote a blog post about that. I could link it, but I don't like it because uh, it's not a, it's not uh, reusable. It's not a very. It's it has a lot of problems. So GUI-based workflows, no go. But this is still useful if you want to do something like this. For example, if you want to show something to a coworker or to your boss. Um, you, you notice something weird in the data and you want to copy and paste it in an email. So you can do something like this and then you just copy and paste that in an email and you, you got a nice table or you can immediately send this Excel thing uh, to, to a colleague, to your boss, etc. Um, by maybe highlighting the cells that seem weird, etc. So this is still useful even though uh, I don't use Excel to do my data cleaning and my data analysis, but as a as a way to communicate with uh, normies, it's pretty pretty useful. So that's it. So these are three little tricks that I use. Um, I will link a gist in the description with the source code um, of my functions, and I will also link a, the the website to HTTPGD where it explains, but there, there are many functions in HTTP GD, but I, I just use these two, basically. The one to start the server, which is just HGD, and the one then to browse HTTP browse. So yeah, that's it. I hope uh, you enjoyed and you find this helpful. It's, if you're not using our studio, I think this, this can really be, be nice. If you're using our studio, maybe Vue Excel uh, could still be something that uh, that you could in include in your workflow. And again, the way to do that, the easiest way to do that is to uh, edit your R profile because your R profile is a file that um, will <coughs> be loaded as you start an R session. So everything that you will write here will, will be loaded. So if you define a function like here, view and view Excel, well, these functions will, uh, will be available in, in all your R sessions. So that's uh, that's really really useful so hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah see you next time